So this last type of proof we're going to talk about is proof by induction. And the first thing I want to talk about is what did, uh, induction actually is. And it's the opposite of deduction. So deductive reasoning moves from a general case to a specific case. Everything we've done up to this point is deductive reasoning. We started with a statement and we applied general other theorems that we know to get to a specific conclusion. Inductive reasoning does the opposite. We start with a specific case, a specific observation, and try to generalize it. And we'll see this in a minute. Well, there are three steps that we can do this. We prove what we call the base case. And this is my specific example. Usually, the base case is n equal to 1. Uh, it's n equal to 1 for if I tell you that n is a positive integer. If I were to say natural numbers, this typically would mean n equal to 0. Um, I could give other cases, right? If I said like somewhere in the statement, so if we look at example 22, and I'm going to erase this, this is not part of the problem. But if I told you that n, this only worked when n was greater than 5, then your base case would be 5. Right? Your base case is whatever the lowest possible case is. The next thing we do is we make an assumption, and this is what allows us to move to a general case. We assume that the statement is true for n equal to k. So it's true for some number of cases. I'm changing the variable over here to be mostly to be formal um, because we can't technically use the um, the thing that we're trying to prove in the proof, right? It's like defining the word using the word. Um, so if we change the variable, suddenly it's a different thing. Um, and it lets us actually use my assumption. So we assume that it's true for some k number of cases. To make sure this works and to be general, let's prove it beyond that k case. We want to prove for the k plus 1 th case. It's this idea that if we have one, two, three, and those are all true, we can show that the first one is true. And we can assume that it's true up to k. Well, if I prove it for k plus one, right, if I prove it beyond my assumption, right, so here is my assumption, here's the base case, here's my, I gotta be careful how I abbreviate this, um, my assumption. If I prove it beyond my assumption, then we can kind of conclude that it works for everything before it. You really want to keep track of what these statements look like. It's really easy to get confused. It's really easy to get bogged down by the notation. So we want to be careful here. Let's look at an example. Let me zoom in so I have a little more room to work. Prove that this statement, prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to n is equal to this expression, n times n plus 1 over 2. And this is absolutely true. This is a big thing in something called number theory. Well, let's start with our base case. First of all, what is this even saying? Well, this is just a way of expressing the sum of n positive integers. That way of talking about it is going to be helpful when we try to explain what our base case is going to do. So let's start with the base case. And that's, I should state here that this works for positive integers. Technically, I guess it does work for 0, but that's a trivial case. Um, so my base case, because I gave you positive integers, is n equal to 1. Well, what's the sum of one positive integer? Well, the sum of the first positive integer is just 1. So my left-hand side is just directly equal to 1. Great. So can I show that the same is true for my right-hand side? For n equal to 1, I get 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2. So I get 1 times 2 over 2, which is 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So I can show that my left hand and right hand side are equal. My specific case works. We're good, and we can move on to my assumption. Actually, I don't want to say assumption. I just want to say assume. So we're going to say assume true for n equal to k. Now, what does this look like? 
this would be to say that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way up to k is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2. We're going to use this. So when we do the k plus first case, like we're supposed to do next, that's what I'm going to say next, prove for n equal to k plus 1. And this is what we call, there's a different color, this is what we call the inductive step. And we want to use our assumption to do that. So use our assumption from 2. Well, the first thing I want to look at is what does this even mean again? What does it mean to prove for k plus 1? What am I trying to look at? So what I want to do, I want to show, or I want to prove, that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus dot 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 plus k plus 1, all the way up to the k plus 1 case, is equal to k plus 1 times, well, k plus 1 plus 1, so k plus 2 over 2. And I got that just from substituting into my given statement. Right, I just took all my n's and replaced them with k plus 1. So let's do it. Start with the left-hand side. So we're just going to work with the left-hand side alone, try to transform it into the right-hand side. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the way to k plus 1. I want to try to fit my assumption in somewhere, and it's not immediately obvious. Well, I don't have to write the dot dot dot, but I do because there are infinitely many terms. So I could actually express more than the ones I, I was given, right? I could also put plus 4, plus 5, plus 6. I could also do this from the opposite direction. So I don't have to just write k plus 1. I could write the term before, and the term before is k. And if I wanted to go even farther back to like k minus 1, I could do that too. This makes it hopefully a little more obvious that I have my assumption, right? I want to introduce my assumption so that way I can use it. And because my assumption is sitting there and I've made my assumption, I can use my assumption to finish off my proof. So now I have just an algebraic expression. Let's combine it and see where I get. Uh, so let's make a common denominator. I'm also going to do some of the foiling out right now, so or the distribution. So I have k squared plus k plus 2 times k plus 1 over 2. Um, let's see. Well, this is just going to be 2k plus 2. So I'm going to get k squared plus 3k plus 2 over 2. And it, I might look stuck here. And if I am really stuck, I could actually do what I do with a normal direct proof. That's all this is, is a direct proof now. Um, and take it from the right-hand side and try to work that down. But let's think a little logically here. Um, I have a trinomial. I'm trying to get it into two binomials, k plus 1, k plus 2. I wonder if this actually factors out. And sure enough, it does. This factors into k plus 1, k plus 2 over 2, which is exactly my right-hand side, and proof. And maybe we would, again, be formal and add in a statement that says, hence, all the sum of the integers. So maybe I'm just going to write it out this way. Right? The sum from 1 to infinity, I guess, or 1 to however many, 1 to n of just the integers is n times n plus 1 over 2. Right? And that sigma is just a shorthand way of writing what I wrote above. So here's kind of just one example of one of these proofs. And it's kind of outlining some of the basic steps.